This book could change your life. I know that sounds like clickbait, but it's true. This book teaches you how to learn, and that is such a fundamentally important skill. I mean, to excel at anything, you have to be able to learn. But for some reason, it's a skill that's rarely taught, and I don't really understand why. I'm going to share this book with you. I'm going to give you a brief summary of what it contains and tell you what I like about it and what I don't like so much, uh, and then you can decide whether or not it's the right book for you. I'll also give you three learning techniques from the book which will definitely improve your learning. And the other thing that I want to do is compare this book with this book, which if you watch the channel regularly, you will have seen me talk about. This is a great book on learning and uh, I still like this book very much, but how does it compare to this one? Well, keep watching to find out. You know when you cram for a test and then shortly afterwards forget everything that you've learned? And don't tell me that you've never done that before. Uh, chapter one is all about that and it explains the difference between working memory, which is if you know how computers work, it's a bit like RAM. It's the memory that you use whilst you're thinking. And it compares that to long-term memory. And it explains that to learn, you have to move information from your working memory to your long-term memory. And it discusses ways of doing that. It also talks about how working memory can give the illusion of learning and how it deceives you into thinking that you've learned something. So, you know, when you're reading a textbook and you go through it and you think, yeah, 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 I know how to do that. And you go through the worked example just quickly. And you have a sense that you understand it, but then when you go back to it, perhaps the next day, you can't remember anything about it or you don't know how to do it. That's because your working memory has fooled you into thinking that you've learned it when you haven't really. So chapter one sort of introduces that topic. Chapter one talks about the limitations of working memory. And your working memory is really quite limited. And it uses the analogy of an octopus with four tentacles that can only hold four things at once. And it introduces methods that you can use to move information from your working memory to your long-term memory. Chapter two goes into working memory in a little bit more detail, and it discusses the effects that working memory can have on your ability to learn. And it talks about two types of people, the race car driver who have pretty good working memories, and then the hiker whose working memories aren't quite so good. And it's true that if you don't have a great working memory, then you can find it more difficult to learn. That's the bad news. But the good news is that your long-term memory is pretty much limitless. And if you don't have such a good working memory, you can use strategies that will enable your long-term memory to kick in. So I think this is one of the strengths of the book because if you have a poor working memory, you can easily be written off as someone that can't learn particularly well. But these methods will ensure that you can learn as well or in some cases even better than people who have really good working memories. Chapter three explains how your brain works. Obviously not completely, but what it does do is tell you how information goes from the working memory to the long-term memory, and that's in the neocortex, and what role the hippocampus plays in that. I didn't know much about these processes, so it was useful to me. It also has some practical use because it makes you more aware of things like why sleep is important when it comes to transferring information from your working memory to your long-term memory. Chapter four discusses a really important topic, procrastination how to avoid it and how to overcome it. It also talks about the brain's two methods of concentration, focused and diffuse, and how understanding those can help you to optimize your own learning. Essentially, you work in focus mode until you become frustrated with something that you can't do anymore, and then you rest so that your brain can make sense of what's going on. The book also discusses two learning pathways, the declarative pathway and the procedural pathway. Declarative is when you intentionally learn something like, I don't know, studying Latin vocab. And the procedural pathway is when you learn how to ride a bike. Usually you can explain the declarative process, but you can't explain the procedural one. And to learn something well, you need to use both pathways. What did I like about the book? Definitely the information that it contains. It's all based on scientific evidence and it's explained in a very accessible style. Was there anything that I didn't like? Sometimes that accessible style moves a little bit too close, I think, to being simplistic. But that only happens every now and then. And I do understand that they're aiming this book at a very wide market. So if you own this book, make it stick. Is it worth getting this one? There's quite a lot of overlap between these two books. This book's far more recent. It was published a couple of years ago. And this one is getting on for 10 years old now, but they're both based on science. This one goes more into how the brain works, but they cover a lot of the same ground. If you're just looking for practical learning techniques, then you only need one or the other. 
But if you're interested in learning in general, then you know you might as well get them both. This book does cover ground that this one doesn't. So here are some learning techniques from the book that you can use today. Number one, retrieval practice. This is the most effective learning technique known to science. We learn more when we attempt to retrieve information from our brains. So if you want to learn something, test yourself. Just keep testing yourself. And when I've mentioned this in the past in other videos, I've had people in the comments saying, oh, but that's just rote learning. It's not. Retrieval practice, i.e. testing yourself, improves memory and understanding. You will understand a topic better and remember more about it if you test yourself on it. And also if those tests become more difficult and try to link it into information and knowledge that you already have. How does this subject A link with subject B? What does it mean for subject C? Ask yourself questions about it from lots of different angles. Spaced practice is when you have a gap between study sessions. So if you're going to study something for, I don't know, five hours, instead of doing five hours in one day, you're better doing five hours across five days. You also get the added bonus that when you come to the next session, you can use retrieval practice to remember what you covered in the first session. Method three is interleaving. Now that's where instead of studying the same topic within a subject in blocks, you mix up the topics. So for an example, if you were studying physics and you were doing Newton's laws of motion, instead of answering lots and lots and lots of questions on Newton's laws of motion, it's more effective to mix it up with say, Newton's laws of gravitation and perhaps circular motion. And the reason is this, if you're just doing a lot of questions on laws of motion, you don't have to think deeply about how you answer that particular question because you know it's a laws of motion question. Whereas if you mix it up, you have to recognize which method that you need to use because you have to first categorize that problem. And that categorizing of the problem helps you to see the nuances and the differences and similarities between different topics within a subject. So interleaving is a very effective method and it's been shown by lots of research to be far more effective than just doing lots of one thing and then lots of another thing. And it's not just in physics, it's been shown to be effective in lots of different subjects as well. Two other bits of advice, exercise helps learning and so does sleep. A lot of the topics I talk about in this video are difficult to learn, but there's a free and easy way to help you grasp them. Brilliant.org, the sponsor of this video. Brilliant is the best way to learn math, data science and computer science interactively, because learning isn't a passive process. If you want to master a subject, you have to engage with it. You have to think about it from different perspectives and challenge your understanding of it. And that's how you learn with Brilliant. It helps you to hack the learning process by giving you fun, interactive challenges right from the start. You're not just learning a topic, you're learning how to think. And that is a powerful skill. Brilliant has thousands of lessons from beginner to advanced covering a variety of fascinating topics like AI, neural networks and data science. If you've ever wondered how AI chatbots work, you'll love this new course on large language models where you get to see and understand what goes on behind the text. You'll learn about training data, models, and how pre-processing and tokenization make models much more effective. Take a quick quiz when you sign up and you'll be matched with content that fits your skill level and interests. To see how far you can go with Brilliant, you can get started for free for a full 30 days by going to brilliant.org forward slash Python programmer, or just click on the link in the description. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription.